I declare the meeting open. Madam President, former chairman, delegates, fellow members and friends, welcome to Perth and to the 92nd Annual General Meeting of the Royal Scottish Country Dance Society and to the Autumn Gathering Weekend. Welcome also to members who cannot join us today but are watching the recorded video of this meeting over the coming days. I am Lorna Ogilvie, Chairman of the Society. On my left is William Williamson, Chairman-elect, and on my right, our Treasurer, Bill Kant. Before moving on with the agenda, I must point out that there is no planned fire alarm test this afternoon, and therefore, in the event of a fire, the alarm will sound. Please make your way to the nearest fire exits, they're signposted in green, and proceed to the fire assembly point, which is located at the front of the building on the floodlit rugby pitch. Venue COVID regulations require that CO2 levels are monitored during this meeting. We don't anticipate a problem, and this will be done discreetly by Bell staff at the back of the hall and if necessary, they will open the doors for ventilation. Delegates should have all registered and collected a copy of the agenda and the summary version of the annual report. The agenda, the 2020 AGM minutes, the summary document and full trustees report have been circulated previously to branch officers and were added to the website. Observers are able to see the agenda and the summary report for information. It is a real delight for me to be able to welcome you in person after what has been a really challenging year for everyone. The happiness at meeting friends and dancing together was very much in evidence last night. However, this meeting has not yet fully returned to its usual format and your understanding is much appreciated. At the legal deadline for making arrangements, there remained much uncertainty about COVID restrictions and travel, particularly from overseas. For this reason, and also in case we were forced to move to a virtual meeting at the last minute, all voting has taken place digitally, including motions. The voting turnout this year was 89.1%. Exceptionally, as voting has already taken place, there will be no discussion from the floor this, at this meeting. I trust that the opportunity that we gave online for debate between branches was helpful. And I sincerely hope that in-person contributions, particularly regarding motions, will once again be possible in 2022. And for practical reasons, we may retain voting for elected posts digitally. And I now move on to agenda item two. The message from the Society's patron, Her Majesty the Queen. Please convey my warm thanks to the management board and members of the Royal Scottish Country Dance Society for their loyal greetings sent on the occasion of their 92nd annual general meeting, which is being held today. As your patron, I was interested to learn of the programme for the autumn gathering and I'm grateful for your thoughtfulness in keeping me informed. In return, I send my best wishes to all those gathered in Perth for a most successful and enjoyable programme. And it's signed Elizabeth R. We then move to agenda item three, apologies for absence. I have apologies from former chairman, Jim Healy, Ruth Beatty, Aaron Bennett, Alan Mayer, Stuart Adam, Alec Gray and Andrew Kellett. Apologies have also been received from the two branches, the Hagen District Branch and Stonehaven Branch. Agenda item four, the minutes of the meeting of 7th November 2020. The minutes of the last meeting were sent to delegates six weeks ago and there have been no requests for changes to be made to them. Lara Friedman Shedloff, Twin Cities Branch USA, has proposed the adoption of the minutes, seconded by Carlos Candia, International Branch, Argentina. Delegates have approved these digitally. 291 delegates voted in favour, none against, and 20 abstentions. 
I declare, therefore, that the minutes of the meeting of 7th November 2020 are adopted as an accurate record, and I will now formally sign them. Agenda item five, society chairman remarks. In what has been a very strange year as society chairman with virtually no dancing, we have all, myself included, come to appreciate the benefits of online communications. For the society, these links have not only kept our dancing family connected, but have let us entertain and inform. Meetings held virtually have allowed the business of the society to continue, but I know I speak for those who miss the personal contact and the informal chat over coffee and lunch from which so many ideas emerge. Lockdown was hard for everyone in different ways and in different countries. It has been so uplifting to hear about branch and group activities that have involved virtual classes, dances, newsletters, quizzes, and musical evenings. Through all of these, you have encouraged a very welcome level of membership renewal at a time of no dancing. So thank you to you all. Branch virtual activities supplemented the truly amazing job done by the Dance Scottish at Home team over a period of 18 months. Initiated by my predecessor, Andrew Kellett, thanks must go to all the class teachers and musicians, two music directors, Ian Muir and Luke Brady, and to three committee conveners, Anne Taylor, Joanna Stausberg, and Peter Knappman for their input weekly. Bringing it all together was Angela Young, who will receive her well-deserved scroll at the end of this meeting. Additionally, we have produced two virtual summer schools, an autumn evening, a winter school, and a spring fling. I know I speak not just for those present, but for dancers everywhere in saying thank you to every single contributor for keeping us entertained and more importantly, in touch. None of these activities would have been possible without the tireless work of our office staff, expertly led by Claire McGregor, the office manager. More than most, I know how professionally they approach each and every challenge. Highly organized, whilst working together remotely as a, a strong team, they have carried us through a difficult 12 months, efficiently and with considerable patience and humor. The work of the Society has continued as the Trustee's annual report and summary leaflet reflect. We have a strong social media presence and an informative magazine. Thanks to Ewan Watt, our Interim Marketing Director, and now Lindsay Walker, the new Marketing Officer, we are well placed to take full advantage of the return to the dance floor and the opportunity to encourage new dancers to join us. The many members of committees, working groups and panels also deserve plaudits. Their ongoing work at a time of no dancing has ensured that we were prepared for a busy 2022 in the run up to our centenary. In particular today, we must thank two retiring conveners, Peter Knappman and Joanna Stausberg. They have worked very hard with their committees over the past three years on your behalf as have our two retiring board members, Roy Bain and Gary Cool. Both have been involved in working groups as well as the work of the board. RSCDS thrives as a society thanks to every single individual in branches who gives of their time, whether teaching, organizing events, or simply serving teas and coffees. It has been a very real pleasure to congratulate those who have received well-earned branch awards. On a personal level, I wish to take this opportunity to thank Bill, William and Claire for their commitment, support, insight and friendship. They have been a quite exceptional senior team to work with through the challenges of the past year. I hope that this report reflects my belief and optimism that the success and the future of the society lies in the hands of everyone who plays their part, however small. Thank you to you all.
We now move on to agenda item six, the adoption of the trustees annual report and accounts, and I hand over to the treasurer, Bill Kant, who will give a brief presentation. Madam President, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. This document is the trustees report and financial statements for the year to 31st March 2021. They were approved by the Management Board on the 26th of June and duly signed by the auditors on the 30th of April. It is this document, all 46 pages of it, that we are looking to approve this afternoon. It has been available on the RSCDS website since July and you will be relieved to know that I am not going to go through it in detail. The first 13 pages provide details about the Society's achievements and activities during a year when there was no dancing. If you have not already read these pages, I would encourage you to do so. That is followed by the audit report and then 29 pages of financial detail. Later in my presentation, I will refer to the summary of financial activities that you've got in a nice wee coloured document somewhere. The results for the year ended 31st March are shown in page 17, is page uh, 18 of this report and show buried in the middle of the schedule that the society reported a surplus of £45,713 compared to the 2020 deficit of £46,717. This significant turnaround was not originally anticipated. In fact, some of you will remember me sitting at my kitchen table at this time last year telling you that the society was budgeting for a deficit of £170,000 for the year. At this point uh, in my report, I would normally talk, continue to talk about financial numbers until your eyes gently glaze over. However, this is my last year that I will be standing before you, and I believe that I can more usefully uh, illustrate the financial uh, position of the society by the use of props. I have wanted to do this for years, <laughs> and at last, I think this is an opportunity when it might be useful. An old American boss of mine described this as a dog and pony show. Now, I had rather hoped to persuade a young, attractive, scantily clad assistant to help me at this point, but William wasn't up for it. <laughs> so I'm going to have to multitask. You have here a selection of boxes, uh, and they represent the various funds contained in the society's account. They are not in proportion to the value of the funds and any resemblance to wine cases or shoe boxes is not entirely coincidental. <laughs> Having come from a, a commercial accounting background, I found these various funds that they use in charity accounting a bit akin to the old story of jam jars on the mantelpiece where you put your money for the rent and the money for the gas. The numbers that I'm speaking about are all shown on this chart in, uh, in the summary document that you have got. The first and largest fund is the general fund. This fund holds most of our investments and most of the transactions and daily running costs are accounted through this fund. They include subscriptions, school's income, shop income, staff costs, and all the costs of running, on the, uh, running a charity. And on the subject of the shop, can I take this opportunity to encourage you all to buy a copy of the Sir Walter Scott book. Any book that makes such prominent reference to Heart of Midlothian <laughs> must be a real buy. The first, uh, we originally budgeted a deficit 
of 139,000. But money from the appeal, along with cost savings, reduced this to a deficit of 91,381. Within that deficit, it is pertinent to, to observe that subscriptions totaled 168,000, while staff costs before the benefit of the furlough scheme totaled 216,000. Subscriptions don't even cover staff costs. The next fund is, is the designated assets fund. That is effectively the value of, Coates, uh, of our offices in a 12 Coates Crescent, which are valued at 625,000, and it also includes computer equipment. This shows a depreciation expense of £30,000 as we have virtually finished writing off the cost of the new website. Then we have the development fund. The development fund was originally uh, set up as a result of a particularly generous legacy and it funds special projects. This year it benefited from two more generous legacies and we spent money on the fundraising consultancy and the marketing support. We also transferred funds to the general fund to support the reduction in the subscription and to help fund the Scottish Schools Initiative. The next fund, next fund is the Jean Milligan Memorial Fund. That was, uh, is there to uh, support the training of teachers and the attendance at summer school, etc. However, as we all know, there was no dancing, so no money was spent out of the Jean Milligan Memorial Fund, but the regular in, uh, investment income was received and will be able to be used in future years. For the matter of simplicity, I've, the income and lack of expenditure from the two smaller funds, the Aikenhead Fund and the Port of Bequest, £141 income in all, can be included there. That means that the total deficit from the funds that existed at the 31st of March 2020, i.e. the beginning of the year, is a deficit of £103,000. However, in the course of the year, four new funds were created, and one, and, uh, but one, all but one, gave the society income but no expenditure. The one, the job retention scheme, can be ignored. Typical bit of bureaucracy, it shows the furlough money of 31,000 coming in and then going out again. Much more usefully, your Chairman Lorna worked with the charity consultancy, which identified potential charities who might support the Scottish Schools Initiative. Letters were written and £21,500 was raised. 11,500 of that uh, is unrestricted, they were, uh, but designated. So it becomes an unrestricted designated fund. The other donation of £10,000 came with strings attached. <laughs> it has to be used within a, a within a, it, it's, it's used for the for the, the scottish school scheme but it's got to be used within a certain time now that's a bit tricky uh, when the schools uh, are, are closed outside organizations at the present moment but we are working on extending that the final new fund is the haynes fund and it also comes with strings attached that fell over with me this morning when I was practicing <laughs> with it, so I'm, I'm being kind of careful. Anyway, the final new fund, the Haynes Fund, also came with strings attached. As I explained in the trustees report, we were notified that Mrs. Maureen Haynes had left a legacy valued at £127,444 to allow the Derek Haynes Award to continue to support a young dancer or musician 
to attend summer school. Therefore, this fund is a restricted fund as the money has to be used for that purpose. However, since then, uh, we have received the final payment, which includes an additional £67,000. This means that the Haynes Fund now stands at £191,000. This is an incredibly generous legacy, and it means there are plenty of bursaries for young people between the ages of 18 and 35 to attend summer school. The challenge for you guys is to find enough young dancers and musicians to benefit from this generosity. And if I can go off script for a minute, we were discussing this morning about uh, musicians and the difficulty of getting musicians, uh, particularly outside Scotland, who know anything about Scottish country dance music. If you've got a musician with a bit of talent and a bit of interest, or even no interest in Scottish country dance music, this bursary will allow you to offer that musician a week's holiday in St Andrews, where he will be mixing with fellow musicians and he will learn what an eight bar phrase is, 32 bars, and he will learn, or she, sorry, she can learn. So there are opportunities here opened up by the Haynes Fund and you guys need to put your thinking caps on and say, how can we get these young people to summer school to enjoy summer school? Therefore, the income relating to the Scottish Schools Initiative and the Haynes Fund totaled £148,944. Uh, £148, and this wipes out the deficit and results in the surplus of £45,700 that uh, we achieved last year. There is yet more good news shown on page six of, of this report. Last year, we reported a fall in the value of the charity's investments because stock market, uh, the fall was £34,000. Stock markets fell when COVID hit these markets in February last year. Since the 31st of March uh, last year, stock markets, particularly in the USA, have recovered very well and the charity's investments rose by £186,500, most of the gain in the General Fund or the Jean Milligan Memorial Fund. While you might be relaxed uh, about the surplus of uh, 45700 let us look at how 2021-2022 is going. Well, the good news is that we're slightly ahead of budget. The bad news is that the budget for the six months was a deficit of 67,600, and the actual result was a deficit of 67,000, a 600 pound difference. Therefore, we have blown the 45,000 surplus from last year. The budgeted deficit for the full year to the 31st of March uh, 22 is 121,000, given the absence of summer school, reduced membership, and reduced sales. Achieving even that depressing budget will depend on the result of the autumn gathering, which we're all thoroughly enjoying, but you will notice that the dancing numbers were down a bit. Winter school, where I am confident that we will attract a greater number of dancers at a realistic price, because the director is, of course, our own William Williamson. The society, finances, uh, the, the society has some financial challenges ahead, but there are still reasonable reserves. I am confident that the new treasurer and management board will successfully take the society forward. Therefore, I would like to propose that the meeting adopt the trustees report and financial statements for the society at the end of the year, the year ended 31st March 2021.
The motion was seconded by David Macdonald, Management Board and Aberdeen Branch. Thank you. And because we... And because you have already voted, delegates have voted for 304, none against, and 11 abstentions. So I'm pleased to declare that the trustees' annual report and accounts to the 31st of March 2021 are duly adopted. And I move on to agenda item seven, the appointment of the auditor. And I call again upon Bill Kant to propose the appointment of Alexander Sloan, Chartered Accountants, as auditor. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, Alexander Sloan Chartered Accountants have been the Society's auditors for many years. They audit the report and financial statements as prepared by our accountants, uh, Henderson Logie. Alexander Sloan have proved to be very professional with extensive experience of charity accounts. They work well with our staff and management and their diligence continues to provide enhanced governance for the society to the benefit of the trustees and the members. Therefore, I would like to propose that the society appoints Alexander Sloan, Chartered Accountants, as auditor. It is seconded by Fiona Grant, Management Board and Bristol Branch. And again, I am able to give the, the results of, of the voting. Delegates have voted 304 for and none against with seven abstentions. And I confirm therefore that Alexander Sloan, Chartered Accountants, are duly appointed as auditor for the coming year. We then move on to agenda item eight. And this is, these are motions. 8.1 is the membership subscription. RSCDS trustees are required at the AGM each year to set the annual subscription for RSCDS membership. And so I invite Bill again to propose the motion on behalf of the Management Board. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I will work on the assumption that you have all read and understood the background paper which was issued to all branches and I also assume that you have read uh, my response and feedback uh, which you provided and a lot of that feedback was, was very interesting and provides plenty of food for thought. I'm not going to go through uh, these documents again, however I will remind you of my presentation a few minutes ago. For the year to the 31st March 2021, the General Fund, even after the appeal, which raised 33,000, recorded a deficit of 92,000. The budget for this current year, which I have indicated will be a challenge to achieve, is another deficit of 121,000. This proposed subscription increase goes some way to start addressing these losses and combined with other measures, will start to move the society back into running a surplus. For those of you who believe that the annual subscription is actually great value at twice the price, I would bring your attention to the, bear with me a minute. I would bring your attention to the wee bit on the back of that uh, uh, document there, that statement. Uh, it's apparently on page seven of the activity summary where there are suggestions as to how you can further support Scottish country dancing. Therefore, the management proposes that for the year from the 1st of July 2022, the basic full annual membership shall be increased to £25 per annum with other membership subscriptions braced pro rata on that amount. It is seconded by Neil Copeland, Perth and Pe Management Board and Perth and Perthshire. And delegates have voted on this motion, 197, 65.2% for, and 105 against with nine abstentions. So the, mot the motion is therefore duly adopted. 
We now move on to 8.2, amendments to the wording of the RSCDS Articles of Association. The Management Board proposes an update to the sections covering virtual meeting, digital voting and the RSCDS Honorary President. The motion is proposed by Trevor Clark, Management Board and Northwest Craven Branch, and seconded by Jane Meikle, Management Board and Dumfries Branch. This has gone to the vote and delegates have voted 293, that's 99% for and three against with 15 abstentions. The motion is therefore duly adopted. Motion 8.3, as there is an amendment to motion 8.3, the amendment will be taken first. And that is 8.4. RSCDS Bristol would like to table an amendment to the motion 8.3 on the agenda for the Society AGM to be held on 6th November 2021. The branch suggests the words, as well as bringing the management committee remits in line with the 2021 trustees report, are deleted from the motion. The motion is proposed by Caroline Dunn, Bristol branch, seconded by Simon Wales, London branch. Delegates have voted 168, 70.3% for, and 71 against, with 72 abstentions. This means that the amendment to motion 3, 8.3 is upheld, so the words are withdrawn from amendment 8.3. We now move to 8.3, amendments to the wording of the RSCDS rules and procedures. The management board proposes an update to the sections covering virtual meetings, digital voting, RSCDS honorary president, as well as bringing the management committee remits in line with the 2021 trustees report. The motion is proposed by Joan Nesbitt, management board and Oxfordshire, and seconded by Roy Bain, Management Board and Helensborough and District Branch. Delegates have voted 250, 92.6% for and 20% against with 41 abstentions. As the amendment to motion 8.3 was carried, only the sections covering virtual meetings, digital voting and RSCDS honorary president will be updated. Before I move on to agenda item nine, I should like to thank members retiring from the management committees at this AGM. For youth services, Imerick Frombers and Moira Chorus, for education and training, Sue Porter and Muriel Bone, and for membership services, Alan Ross. You've all given of your time and skills to your respective committees, and we thank you most sincerely. In addition, I thank Anne Taylor in her time as schools director. It has been a frustrating role due to the cancellation of all schools, but she has contributed much to the virtual events that have been held during the past year. And I move on to agenda item nine, which is confirmation of the treasurer. And I am really delighted to confirm the appointment of Elizabeth Condor as treasurer. And now on to the election of the Management Board. Agenda item 10. 10.1, we had five members who stood for three places for three years. The following have been elected. Andrew Nolan, Helen McGinley, and Simon Wales. Convener of Youth Services Committee, 10.2. There was no election required, so it is my pleasure to confirm Philippa McKee as Convener of Youth Services. Now then move on to agenda item 11, the election of management board committee members. The convener 11.1 of education and training committee, convener elect of education and training committee. No election was required, so I'm pleased to confirm Deb Lees as convener elect for e and 11.2, three members of education and training committee. No election was required, so Ellie Briscoe and Lorna Valentine joined the committee for three years. 11.3, four members of Membership Services Committee. Five members stood for the four places. Julie Granger and Andrew Smith are elected to serve for three years, and Paul McKnight and Maureen Daniel for one year. 
And finally, 11.4, three members of the Youth Services Committee with a single nomination, Linda Williamson, who will serve for three years. Under the power of Article 48, the Board confirms the appointment of these members of the Management Committees who have been elected by the branch delegates. There are vacancies on both Education and Training and Youth Services Committee, and under the terms of Rule 16H, both committees will consider whether to make appointments to fill these places, the vacancies for the coming year. Any such appointment will be subject to confirmation by the Management Board. I congratulate all successful candidates joining the Management Board and the committees, and I very much look forward to working with you in the coming year. If you were unsuccessful, please do consider standing again. It's also a pleasure to announce that Janet Johnson will take over as the lead schools director, as supported by Jim Stott. And additionally, we have welcomed Katie Haig as our very first child wellbeing and protection officer. Each year, the Society presents the Scroll of Honour to a very small number of members who have given truly outstanding service to the RSCDS. Last year's recipients were given the option of receiving their scrolls at branch events or attending in person today. We are delighted that four of them chose to be here. And we also welcome our Honorary President, Jean Martin, to present the scrolls. I'm now going to hand over to William Williamson to announce the recipients and to read their citations and that of the 2021 nomination. William. President Jean, Chairman Lorna, uh, this is a, a really lovely moment in the AGM and we, we provide scrolls and award people for the hard work they've done on behalf of Scottish Country Dancing and the Royal Scottish Country Dance Society. Firstly, Hugh Ferguson, a 2021 scroll recipient, so this year's recipient, nominated by Bristol Branch and presented at a Bristol Branch event earlier this year. Uh, Linda, my wife, myself had the pleasure about a month ago of visiting Bristol Branch, who uh, had a very fine evening for Hugh, who is unable due to health uh, to be with us today. So it was a great pleasure to be in the company of Bristol Branch and Hugh and his wife to present Hugh with his um, scroll. And I think there might be a picture uh, of it there. There we are, there's Hugh. Hailing from Bells Hill near Glasgow, Hugh has been involved with Scottish country dance music since childhood. Moving to Manchester in the 1960s, he joined Tom Hall and the Rattray Band. In the 1970s, Hugh formed his own band, Dalriada. In 1976, Hugh and his wife Joan moved south. The Dalriada Band played all over the country and for many Bath and Bristol RSCDS dances and events. Hugh composed and arranged the music for the Bristol Branch Dance Book in 2002. He has also played for innumerable day and weekend schools where his attention to detail and support for the teacher has been greatly appreciated over the years. Hugh's Dalriada Band travelled extensively overseas, including Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and many countries in Europe for RSCDS events. Dalriada played for events for Her Majesty the Queen and the Royal Family, including the engagement party in 1999 for Prince Edward and Sophie Rhys Jones at Windsor Castle. Hugh is a gifted composer, and along with his wife Joan, they have devised a dance for the Wessex's wedding, the Earl and Countess of Wessex, it's called, which became a featured dance at the Hogmanay Balls of the Royal Family at Sandringham. Hugh has the respect of musicians and dancers the world over. Ladies and gentlemen, Hugh Ferguson. Fiona Miller, a 2020 scroll recipient, nominated by Medicine Hat Branch. Fiona has taught at the Lethbridge Scottish Country Dance Club for over 30 years and been an active member of Medicine Hat Alberta Branch. Her love of dance and its heritage has led to invitations to teach at workshops and summer schools in both Canada and the United States. Fiona has held several positions 
on the Executive Committee of the Scottish Country Dance Teachers Association Canada, or TAC, and is currently its past chairman. Appreciating that the society's long-term future requires new, well-trained, qualified teachers, she has worked tirelessly on the candidate courses at TAC Summer School and led a Dancing Achievement Award Assessors course in Calgary in 2019, resulting in 12 new North American assessors. Fiona is recognised as being instrumental in leading the TAC committee and members calmly and with persistence through very challenging financial times in 2017. She has also promoted the work of TAC to the wider RSCDS community, in particular through her presentations in relation to the John Drury project. Fiona was awarded the Scroll of Honour for her enthusiasm, hard work and dedication to maintaining the high standards of the society in many areas. Ladies and gentlemen, Fiona Miller. And we do appreciate Fiona and her husband for traveling all the way and jumping through all those hoops to be with us today. Thank you for that. That's great. Marilyn Watson, Marilyn 2020 Scroll recipient, nominated by Youth Services Committee. Marilyn has been involved with the RSCDS for the last 60 years as a teacher, examiner, festival adjudicator, and medal test and DAA assessor. She chaired Bournemouth branch for nearly 30 years and served on both the Executive Council and twice on Youth Services Committee. Gaining her teaching certificate at Summer School in St Andrews, she has taught Bournemouth branch classes for 32 years, as well as day and weekend classes globally. Additionally, she has run local teaching certificate classes. With a particular interest in young people and children, Marilyn has trained teams for festivals, competitions and demonstrations. Her teams have danced in the Albert Hall for Scottish tattoos and on the BBC Come Dancing programme. That's the old Come Dancing programme. As a member of Youth Services Committee, she pushed for the age of teaching certificate candidates to be lowered and contributed to the introduction of the St Andrews Junior Summer School in 2017. Marilyn was awarded the Scroll of Honour for her exceptional contribution to the work of the Society and her development of young dancers. Ladies and gentlemen, Marilyn Watson. Ruby Wilkinson, 2020 Scroll recipient, nominated by Edinburgh Branch. Ruby started dancing here in Perth, aged five. She has danced with demonstration teams in Perth, Manchester, Glasgow and Stirling. Gaining her teaching certificate in 1973, she has taught at all levels both in the UK and overseas, in addition to summer school in St Andrews. For more than 20 years, she has taught children's classes in Edinburgh and the Borders. Apart from dancing in music festivals for over 40 years, she has entered many children's teams and become an adjudicator and medal test assessor. Ruby served as Deputy Director of Summer School for three years and as RSCDS Schools Director from 2013 to 2015. Ruby was awarded the Scroll of Honour in recognition of her dedication to both the society and Scottish country dancing as a whole over many years, where she ensured that dancers were encouraged, had fun, and very importantly, felt included. Ladies and gentlemen, Ruby Wilkinson.
And before we have the final one, can I just ask all the scroll recipients to wait behind at the end to have a group photograph taken, please. Thank you very much. Angela Young, 2020 scroll recipient, nominated by the management board. Angela started dancing at a very young age in her native Aberdeen. She began playing for local classes while still at school, before joining summer school staff in St Andrews in 1987, where she is still involved 32 years later, teaching classes and tutoring on the musician's course. More recently, she has taught and played at winter school. For over 20 years, Angela contributed to London branch as a musician, teacher, demonstration dancer, organiser and choreographer. She founded a children's class teaching it for 10 years, as well as running youth workshops and was on the London branch committee, becoming chair in 2011. She is an adjudicator and a medal test assessor and served on the ENT committee from 2013 to 2016. Angela's teaching, dancing and musicianship is recognised worldwide, resulting in invitations to teach in New Zealand, North America, Europe and Japan. She promotes high standards whilst emphasising the social side of Scottish country dancing. Over the past seven months, she has played a crucial role in the Dance Scottish at Home team, not only teaching and playing, but assisting with the overall production. During the week of a summer celebration, she linked dancers around the world in addition to contributing to teaching the Scottish lilt. Without her technical skills, these evenings, which so many enjoyed, would simply not have been possible. Angela is awarded the Scroll of Honour for her dedicated service to the society as a teacher and musician, and her key contribution to the dance Scottish at home. Ladies and gentlemen, Angela Young. We congratulate all the scroll recipients and I thank Jean very much for presenting them. I now move to agenda item 13 where I call upon John Wilkinson from Edinburgh branch to give the vote of thanks. Madam President, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, an event like this doesn't just happen it takes quite considerable organisation from teams of people from various places. Particularly so this year, given that we're just coming out of the COVID pandemic and there are still things and restrictions that we can't do. And it's my pleasure to propose the votes of thanks. What I suggest is you wait till I finish and then do one overall round of applause. First of all, to Kerr Smith and his team here at Bell Sports Centre, without whom we couldn't have an AGM. To all the staff at RSCDS Coach Crescent, Alana Crichton, Linda McGill, Moira Thompson and the Autumn Gathering Working Group. The chair of the meeting, Lorna. Lorna again, who led the open forum. Luke Brady for providing and setting up the sound systems. The ladies from Banffshire branch for decorating the main hall. Alan McPherson, the RSCDS archivist for the archive display. Marian Anderson and her Scottish band, dance band for playing last night at the dance and Jim Lindsay who will be playing tonight. The MCs for Friday night, this oddball from East Lothian and Sue Porter, and tonight Jim Cook and Simon Wales. Cape Town branch who compiled the Friday night programme and London branch who compiled the programme for tonight. Fiona Mackey for her class this morning accompanied by Adam Brady and Deb Lees for tomorrow's class accompanied by Ewan Galloway. All volunteer stewards organised by Alan Crichton. 
Ian Johnson of Johnston Media for the AGM sound system and recording. Perth and Kinross Council for hosting the civic welcome. Jimmy Hill, Mo Rutherford and Peter Knappman for Sunday's talk. Delegates for attending and all of you also for attending. Please, can you put your hands together to thank all those teams. Before I move on to agenda item 14, I would like to say a very special thank you from all of us to two individuals who have given so much to the society and retire from their respective roles at this meeting. Firstly, I want to take this opportunity to thank Bill Kant, who retires as treasurer today after six years. Financially, the last 18 months have been especially challenging for the society with cancelled events and no dancing. During this period, our finances have been in excellent hands and efficiently managed with meticulous attention to detail, financial acumen and pragmatism. Bill's calm presentations at AGM meetings have allowed even those of us with maybe limited financial understanding to grasp the nuances of the complex society accounts. And it's all been delivered with much humour, as we witnessed earlier today. So please, on behalf of all of us, Bill, accept this little something and thank you for six great years. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed for those kind words. And I would like to take this opportunity to say a thank you to a few people. Firstly, you are the fourth chairman that I have worked for. There has been Jim Healy, Helen Russell, Andrew Kellett, and yourself. I am grateful to all of them, as they have always supported me with everything that I have tried to do. They all have their individual strength, and what I do know is that these people all work incredibly hard on behalf of the society in the role, which with email and social media is increasingly becoming 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The society is very lucky to be able to call on people of such a high caliber. I'm also on my fourth office manager, executive officer. And that doesn't count the two who wouldn't take no for an answer. <laughs> Firstly, there was Gillian Wilson with some interesting ideas. Then there was Chris Milne, the only person other than a politician who has left his job to spend more time with his family. Then there was Fiona. You won't remember Fiona because she only lasted seven days. <laughs> Finally, we got round to appointing Claire, and Claire has been fantastic for the society. We didn't tell her on our interview that there was a global pandemic coming down the line, and that she would have to manage her team from a screen in her flat for 18 months. We also didn't tell her that she would have to make two people redundant Telling somebody that they are losing their job is the most difficult task in management. And Claire did this with empathy and professionalism. Claire is a keeper. Treat her well. <laughs> However, Claire does have the benefit of some tremendous people working in her team. Cecile, Moira and Kat, they may not be dancing anoraks like you and me, but they are all incredibly committed to the society and they have always been very supportive to me. Finally, there is another member of Claire's team whose work has allowed me 
to stand in front of you and the management board and speak with confidence about the numbers. When I was first appointed, I met the finance manager once, perhaps twice. Then she handed in her notice. I didn't think this was a great start. Jim Healy and I set about recruiting, and we had four interviews lined up one day. The two in the morning came into the well, maybe category. The third one didn't turn up. She presumably had a better offer somewhere else. And then we interviewed the fourth candidate. When she left the room at the end, Jim and I turned to each other and said, she could do a job for us. And so it turned out. Sandra Parrish loves her numbers. Bank accounts reconcile, accounts balance, suppliers are paid on time, and more importantly, debts chased. She has taken on much work that was previously done by outside accountants in the past, saving us money. And when executive officers have left, as they frequently did, then she has stepped up, managed the, the staff in the office with a plot. When Sandra questions some ambitious expense claim or some dubious inf uh, invoice, she is doing her job on behalf of the society. It's what she does every day. I would not have lasted in this role, and I certainly wouldn't have enjoyed it so much, without Sandra working in the background, and I am sure she will provide the same support to my successor. It only leaves me to wish the society all the best in the future. It is in safe hands, and I look forward to meeting you all in a dance floor somewhere. Thank you. And secondly, our sincere thanks must go to Jean Martin. Jean has served as Honorary RSCDS President since 2016 having formerly been chairman between 2002 and 2004. Her recent article in Scottish Country Dancer was not simply highly appropriate as a reflection of her dancing memories and involvement with the society, but also because she was instrumental in the production of the very first edition. Since then, she has been a valued member of the editorial team. Jean has also been a superb ambassador for RSCDS, not just in her president and chairman roles, but also as a teacher traveling far and wide. Jean, we thank you for the grace and energy with which you have served the society and hope you will accept a little something as a thank you. Well, first of all, I have to say how honoured I am to have served as the Honorary President of the RSCDS. As I said at the AGM in 2016, I was quite speechless when invited to take on the role. And being lost for words, is not my norm, as many of you will know. Until March last year, I was very busy attending branch events, some celebrating particular anniversaries, and others, the annual dance held in the village hall. There have been lots of funnies over these five years, but there is one that stands out and it was actually at summer school when I was introduced to a participant for the first time. And she said to me, are you the real Jean Martin? <laughs> My thanks are due to all the branches who invited me to join them at a dance, at a ball, 
at an afternoon tea party, a day school, a weekend school, and even a week's camping in the woodlands of Canada. Sorry, it's USA, not Canada. Where are we? You have all been very welcoming and most hospitable. Certainly, I have enjoyed my time and I have very many happy memories. It has been a very rewarding 18, five years, although the last 18 months have been somewhat different. In fact, in an odd way, because of Zoom classes, virtual summer school and winter schools, spring fling, and local branch web events, members are perhaps more aware now than they were formerly that the RSCDS has people dancing the world over. Those who have, crea have helped create all those events are to be congratulated, as are the chairman, the members of the management board and committees who have soldiered on despite the unusual circumstances. It's not been easy for the staff at Coates Crescent either, but there is a semblance of normality creeping in there now. The lockdown period has been very difficult for our favoured pastime, but things are looking up. Evidence of that is that there were so many people dancing here last night, and they will be again, hopefully, tonight. In Aberdeen, we've been very pleased to see so many dancers coming back to classes. And a few weeks ago, I was at Bill's home branch, Dundee, attending a dance there, and the hall seemed to me to be packed. And it was particularly rewarding because, I, because there were so many younger folks. Not that those of us who qualify for a bus pass are not appreciated too. In 2004, when I admitted office as chairman, I spoke of the need to welcome all new dancers, particularly younger people. If you have young people in your branch, involve them, even if it's only pouring the tea at a social event. There are young dancers around, and we must capture their enthusiasm by involving them with our activities. Indeed, they are our future. It would be wrong, however, to assume that our future is assured, and we must we work towards that. But there are signs of hope. Fitness, fellowship, and fun are our watchword. Mrs. Florence Leslie, of Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh fame, is quoted as saying, Scottish country dancing is immediate friendship. And that is absolutely true. Ours is a marvellous society, and I don't think we say it often enough. I urge you, all of you here this afternoon, to be ambassadors for the society. After all, it is in the local situations where the membership grows. What I have to say to you is thank you all so much. It's been greatly appreciated by me. Thank you. Clearly, we all endorse a big thank you to both people on the stage with me today. 
Finally, we reach agenda item 14, and I can confirm that the date of the next meeting is the fifth, Saturday, the 5th of November in Glasgow, and this concludes the meeting today. Thank you for attending, but I do hope that we're going to have an equally enjoyable evening of dancing this evening as we had last night. Thank you so much for coming, and I declare the meeting closed. <laughs>